All right, so we're here with the, the guys from Dirty Pipes uh, YouTube. We've got Jeeves, Braden, and Todd. How you guys doing? Hi. Howdy. Fantastic. Great. Uh, so let's get a little introduction about you guys' selves. Uh, start, let's start with Jeeves. Let's, let's hear some about you. Oh, fine. Uh, <laughs> my name is Jeeves. Um, I'm from Seattle, Washington. I'm six foot two, and I like cars. <laughs> I don't know what kind of intro we're doing. <laughs> All right. And then Braden? Uh, yeah. My name is also Jeeves. Um, I'm not from Washington. I'm from Utah. Just kidding. No, my name's Braden. Uh, from Utah. Love cars. Uh, classics. They're my heart. So, yeah. I think that's kind of the intro. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what we're doing. Yeah, Todd, give us your intro. Yes. I, I'm Todd, and I like cars. Todd, I know for a fact. <laughs> you, do not, you do not party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm also from Utah. Grew up loving cars and doing anything cars. Um, building cars, I mean, I'm not... It, an expert by any means, but I love anything cars. Anything goes fast, off road, anything unique, different. Yeah, Todd is being humble. He is like the king of off road knowledge. Uh, <laughs> not true. true. Not true at all. I've seen some of your stuff on Instagram of and things. I would disagree, and I'm 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 gonna stand with Braden on this one, Todd. <laughs> I've seen you do some insane things, uh, uh, the four wheel drive off road stuff. I so. appreciate. it. I do love anything with a motor. Gotcha. So how did y'all meet and decide to become Dirty Pipes? Well, actually, I was thinking about this yesterday. I was like, man, because I, I started Agility Customs in 2017 and met Jeeves through a customer. Mm -hmm. And Jeeves was just starting out with his marketing company, Static. And we started hanging out, and then Braden and Jeeves. I'm not sure how those two met, but I met Braden through Jeeves, and we just started hanging out a bunch of the last three three years, and decided to decided to start a YouTube channel about a year ago. Yeah. All right. So, Jeeves, how did you meet Braden then? I met Braden. Trying to think, like the first time I met Braden, I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't the Spanish Fort Cash days, was it? No, that was. I think that was the first time we kind of hung out. Yeah, it's the first time we kind of hung out. It was mostly through Instagram. Yeah, because he reached out. So Braden reached out to me to do a shoot when I got my GTR. So when I had my GTR, when I first got it, probably like two months into it, um, he reached out to me. He's like, dude, let's do a night shoot in downtown Salt Lake. And so I think that might have been the first time that I had met Braden. And um mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was the first. That was like back in 2019. Yeah. yeah beginning of 2019. Gotcha. And then we yeah. came out various times after that. Yeah. And then I think the first time we exclusively hung out was Red Robin and Provo. Yep. And then we went. And, and then shot the GTR. Yeah. Like around here. Yeah, that was really fun. Ironically, it was always his car, never mind. So <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Was that when you had your Maserati? Yes, actually. No, it was before. You oh, no, it was yeah, it was before. It was the end of the Mustang. I was too scared to go for a ride. Oh, yeah. I, right. I never wanted to go for a ride with Braden in the Mustang because he always kept talking about how fast it was. And I hate being in fast. I hate it. And was so it? Like, he always would offer to drive. And I'm like, I'll pass. I'll drive. I'll drive. <laughs> yeah. I was wish we could have driving in the there. district. Uh, huh? Was that the Red Robin in the district when we all met up? Uh, No, Red, this is Red Robin in Provo. Because oh, that's when I think I met Braden. It was when the right before his Mustang went down. Oh, was that he, do, he was doing two step with it, shooting flames. Yeah, no, that was at Mobetas. Remember, because we went to Red Robin, it was too long, and we yeah. went to Mobetas. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's all these great right. stories. I love it. This is yeah. great. Yeah, this is awesome. Triggering memories from back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, how did you guys get into uh, cars? Like your first car, your dream car. You know, goals uh, with cars. Cool. Well, I mean, my first car was a 1977 Ford LTD. It was gold. 
I didn't even know that. I, didn't even I know literally that. had no idea. Yeah. yeah. It was my grandma's car. It probably only had like 40,000 miles on it. That was a amazing vehicle to have in high school. We fit 12 people inside the cab. <laughs> clown car? Yep, clown car. <laughs> and then I just from there grew and my first real kind of like sporty car was an Evo 9. Evo 8 actually. And that started my real my enjoyment of fast cars. I would have loved to see Todd back in the day. With in an Evo 8, eight that would be so, so, Todd, you'd be way cooler if you had Evo right now. <laughs> I, know. I do miss, I do miss that Evo. Had a Taurus SHO. Ooh, wait, what? You know, I didn't even know. I, seriously, I'm learning things right now. 96 Taurus SHO, yep, had that. Dude, wow. Right on. So, yeah. Todd's starting a strong here. This is a strong yeah. Uh, it's hard to come back at that one. That's a strong start. Yeah. All right, Braden. How did you get involved? Uh, well, so I grew up, my dad's a mechanic, so I grew up always loving cars, um, you know, through my dad. He was the one that exposed me to that world. And so, um, yeah, always loved working on cars, uh, you know, hanging out around them. Classics were kind of the first cars I was exposed to um you know going to the like old school car shows you know where you just have rows and rows of classic cars all rama that sort of deal my first car was a <laughs> i was really broke then we, were, we weren't uh rich by any means so my first car was a hundred dollars it was a toyota tercel i bought it with two hundred fifteen thousand miles on it my neighbor was gonna junk it and uh even then like 100 300 bucks was like a stretch then so it was kind of like crazy, but I got into that car and obviously it wasn't anything. I didn't actually buy my first like real like car that I wanted to build and tune and have fun with until I had the, my first Mustang, um, bought that one when I was 19. So what year was that? Yep. Well, what year Mustang was that? I was a 2007. It was silver, but I had the red interior, which the red interior on those were ooh, gorgeous. I freaking <laughs> loved it. Um, and then that car got stolen. And then we, they found it rear end locked up on the fairway. That's a whole long, another story. But um, then I got into my orange Mustang um, shortly after that. And I've been building that ever since. And then obviously the R8. And ah. Those were kind of like the, I think the, the Mustang was a, the first car I ever wanted as a kid where I was like, I'm going to own one of those. Cause it was like the first one that actually made me love the newer generation of them because I, I grew up around classics and classic Mustangs were my favorite 67 GT 350 or a 69 Mach 1, a 69 Boss 9 was like my ultimate favorite in the Twister Orange. So like that was kind of the first car that I like saw where I was like, it represented the classics, but it was new. And I was like, I'm going to own that. So I think that was kind of like my first entry into it. And you still have, you still have one of those Mustangs. I still have the orange Mustang. Yeah. That still we're going to build sometime. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yep. It's going to happen. This year, fingers crossed. <laughs> <clears throat> On wood. <laughs> so I got started i wasn't a car guy at, at when i was younger um i moved to seattle washington i was just 35 40 minutes north of seattle and the car community up there is gnarly like it's crazy and um one of my neighbors um he was one of my best friends growing up his brother was like nissan 300 zx toyota supra like all these awesome jdm cars that you see in fast and furious and they would literally put kits on them. They would do all this stuff. And I'd see it every day. Every day I go to school, I'd see like my, my best, my buddy's Jordan, but his older buddy, Cody, who actually owns a performance shop in Washington. But yeah, he would just get different cars all the time. And I'm like, this is gangster. Like, this is so sick. And then uh, <clears throat> I would just learn from them just growing up. I would just kind of learn from them. I learned, you know, like all, it was all JDMs. It was not really any muscle cars. It was all JDMs up there and Euros and stuff like that. And that's kind of where it started. But yeah, my first car in high school was a Nissan Maxima 2000. Um, my dad bought it from a Utah before we moved. He bought it from Utah. Uh, the, what do you call this? Auto loan at the airport rentals. 
but it was a forest green exterior with the ugliest tan interior you could ever imagine. Um, but yeah, that's where I started. And I went from there to a Mazda Speed 3, 2013, Gen 2. And then I had a Audi A4 wagon. It was an Avant, uh, 1.8 turbo, lowered on uh, H&Rs, and then had a rotiform BLQ monoblock wheels. And then I went to the GTR, to the R8, and then now selling the R8 onto something different. So, gotcha. yeah, that's just a little bit about that. Gotcha. So, Todd, you had mentioned that uh, it was your idea with the, the Utah. Was there something in uh, particular that made you think about uh, doing that with these guys? Besides them uh, being uh, quite funny when they want to be? <laughs> the idea with what? Starting the YouTube? Uh, yeah, starting the YouTube. Oh, no, that was more Jeeves and I just talking one day and then Braden and I, Jeeves and I kind of got together and we all decided to start it. And then we started throwing out weird names. We were literally just driving in the, the truck and mm -hmm. we would just throw out any kind of car part to see if they stuck and they worked. We originally came up with money shift, but that kind of had been taken and <laughs> whatnot. So we, we came up with something a little different because we were trying to think of a unique name, but something kind of related to, to cars. So that's where our dirty pipes just came out through a spitballing in the truck. Gotcha. Like, well, you say that out loud, it sounds. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But no. That's great. Okay, yeah. so like, what is the hardest part of doing uh, uh, the YouTube for you guys? Oh, can I? Answer that? <laughs> Todd, can I answer that, please? Let me answer. Todd, do I have the floor? I don't know if he can hear me. I can hear you. I'm ignoring you. The, oh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to share my thoughts. Okay. So I think the hardest part about the YouTube so far is, is scheduling. That is probably the, for me, that's the hardest part because we can, if we can, if we can schedule it out, we could practice filming all the time and we could just get super, super good. Um, obviously the more you film, but um, yeah, scheduling is hard with three people, especially three people that are all entrepreneurs and that have their own businesses and their own jobs. That's the hardest part about, for me, that's the hardest part of Dirty Pipes. Because if that if we could get that down, we're cracked. It's over. It's game over. We're the best. No doubt. It's true. Scheduling is definitely the hardest. So. Scheduling. You guys are kind of hard to get a hold of. <laughs> that's true. Exactly. But it, has, it doesn't mean that we don't uh, care about you. Though. I mean, <laughs> I'm giving you a bad time, Jeeves. Sorry. Thank you. That's okay. That's okay. You deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what's funny about it? So we talked about this channel. Didn't we like initially talk about this channel mid to end of 2020? Like we yep. were talking about it constantly. Yep. And we spent almost six months talking about all the details of the channel. And I think we, it wasn't until, when did we film the GTR? Because that, that was our first video, wasn't it? Or is it the Trackhawk? Trackhawk. Uh, GTR. GTR, then Trackhawk. I don't know. We filmed the, oh, uh, well. We filmed the GTR. Uh, and then it oh, we filmed the GTR first, but the Trackhawk was posted first. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But our, our first, the first time we even <laughs> filmed, like actually filmed and went into something. Yeah was the GTR. Yep. I think that was like January, February of last year. February. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it took us probably two, three months to get the first video out, just getting it together and editing it and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It amazes me how sometimes you got people out there that turn two, three videos a week. That's got to be yeah. insane. Those people are animals and they're good. Got you. So uh, obviously it's a, it's a rough balance to, uh, between the YouTube and your, your own personal uh, projects that you guys got going on. Um, so besides the YouTube, uh, uh, what, what do you guys actually do outside of, outside of it? Hmm. Todd, leave this one. Start, uh, Todd, I think you start this one. I mean, I frolic through the fields. <laughs> That was the best answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was spit right there. Oh, yeah, oh, I mean, my that's the first guy. I, I do in my spare time. 
Um, once a month, we do Cars and Coffee of Utah. Yeah. Um, really, all my life is just uh, play video games sometimes at night and then Cars and my boys. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Braden? Um, I mean, as far as professional lives, lives outside, I mean, there's photography. Um, we started a new project this uh, January of this year. So um, kind of getting into the NFT space and crypto world, which is really cool. Um, and that's taken off. I, I mean, other than that, it's really just hanging out with these guys and <laughs> just cruising <laughs> around. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of funny because it, sounds like we don't really do much but it's like it's a lot wrapped up underneath all that right but mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is um it's kind of weird like it's just like oh yeah we do car stuff like we do we do car stuff on on the weekends right and that's like every weekend though like every weekend it's it's a we rarely get weekends where we actually just get to relax <laughs> but there's always car stuff like every single weekend and so um Sometimes I think we forget that because that's all we do. Like our whole lives are engulfed. He's got automotive photography and, you know, Todd and I got cars and coffee and Todd's got his connections. And I, we all, we all know the same people. So we all go to the same stuff. Yeah. yeah. Any event that goes on, we all end up going to the same stuff. So yeah, that's kind of, it's, it's funny how it all works out under just the uh, yeah. automotive Utah community. But, oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, so what was like the most memorable car moment that's related to dirty pipes or just in general that you guys have? Most memorable. <sighs> just so many of them. It yeah. really is. Damn, man, I'm trying to think. I mean, SEMA. That was fun. That must have been yep, great. Yep. SEMA, SEMA this last November was pretty. I mean, these guys didn't experience the year before, but it was this year was is bigger but not better um this last november just hanging out with the local car community of utah with stradman steph and kyle i mean it was that night just that friday night hanging and cruising the strip with friends and in cars and just really enjoying life not worrying about anything that's probably one of my top memories of the all of us hanging out yeah that was a good one I have to say that's definitely up there because it was kind of like this cool raw moment of everybody together in a new place with all of our cars. But it mm -hmm. was like we were all just having fun. And I, I think that was probably one of the top just because like in Utah, we do I mean, we pretty much do that exact same thing here almost yeah. all the time. Uh, obviously, we're not getting out of our cars in the middle of State Street here, but like that would be great. <laughs> We could try. I mean, we definitely try. <laughs> but I mean, being in that like space after like a week long of just car stuff, being at SEMA, you know, and then being on the Vegas Strip, which is iconic around the world. And I, I think for me, even personally, just because of the people we were around with down there, but also the cars. I mean, both combined, like unreal experience. Something that I would have dreamed to do, like and would have sat in class daydreaming for hours and hours about but never expected to do in real life. And the fact that we did this, at, you know, this last year was probably one of the coolest moments. Mm -hmm. It yeah. really was. Yeah, it really was. I have a memory more geared towards Dirty Pipes because they've shared what was one of the coolest things we did all last year. <laughs> um, one of my funnest, it was, I think, it, it just so happens to be one of our most viewed videos, but it was the day we filmed the Audi RS7. It was Matt Spencer's RS7 with that uh, Mark Bills had wrapped. And um, I remember that day leaving because it, that day felt different. Like I felt like, I don't know what happened, but it was literally one of the funnest days like filming I've ever had, like that I've ever had so far. And it shows because we had the most fun. Like it was, it was so funny. Like everything we did in that video felt funny. I feel like that video we had the most bloopers. Like we had the, the most reshoots because it was just we just kept laughing. And yeah. uh, it, ah, gosh, yeah, I I missed that. That was really fun. And I think we'll have some good video. I think we'll do some sick stuff. Like we already have some cool cars to film, but we'll have we're gonna have some fun. I think we'll have a lot of fun with uh, some of the new cars going throughout the year. 
But yeah, that Audi R7 video, like one of my favorites, just because everything worked out perfectly. Like, and it wasn't like we planned out everything. Like we had to be here at this time. We had to be here at this time because obviously it's us three that that's not going to work. <laughs> but we're like, hey, let's go take it out here and let's go film around here. Let's get our thoughts. And then we're like, dude, let's go race it against the R8. And then we like went and raced it against the R8, went to the guys at Action Auto. And it was just like way fun. Like everything just flowed perfectly well. Um, but yeah, that was probably one of my favorite videos like to film. That's you. One of my favorite dirty pipe experiences. All right. So uh, what's the favorite car that you got to review on the channel and what cars are you looking forward to the, uh, to reviewing this year? Because it sounds like that it was that, that, that Audi that you were just had talked about. The RS7 was, yeah. That was probably one of the top cars to review just mm -hmm. because it's so new. There's a lot of tech. Like, we learned a lot about, you know, yeah. the different stuff. Like, the 3D little model car, mm -hmm. that, you know, when you put it in reverse. Like, that was, like, cool. And it's super cool. Night vision mode, too, was sick. Like Night vision? What? As night vision. <laughs> I mean, they didn't yeah. come with that, too. No, we didn't. Did. Rest in peace. But <laughs> it is in there. And that's also oh. where the famous quote, 10 piston pipe oh, come from it's from that video yeah right. i was about uh, to, i was about to say my favorite thing on that car was the 10 pistons on it <laughs> this, is, this is this channel are children gonna watch the channel <laughs> <laughs> i know what you're trying to do with that hand there Bruden. <laughs> oh gosh it was so funny because we were just so in the moment yeah it was just yeah it was just yeah and that's why it's funny um, i think one of the cars on this show that we filmed so far don't tell Jesus this was shocking was the GTR. Hey, yeah, not, I didn't have not, to not, say that one. not my favorite. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't my favorite. It was the most wow. shocking. Okay, like you were most impressed, but you were impressed by it. Well. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was, let's say most surprised by it, just because okay. of the turbos and how fast it was. Okay. Yeah. My car did pull like an because oh. yeah, the RS seven. I expected it to be fast and luxurious and all that but the the gtr was shockingly fast flames yeah yeah great sorry not trying to take over what you're saying no no no. i was just gonna say i think it was mostly because the rear seats weren't in it at that time but you know, true go watch that video again. <laughs> yeah that's you're right i have to put a link to that uh yeah. showing that there was no back seat for sure <laughs> yeah well the gopro kept like panning over the side like it'd be a beautiful shot of one of us driving it <laughs> and then it'd like slide over it, and like it would be like completely open and I was oh like, yeah what the frick is that yeah you'd see like uh, her <laughs> domino's bag over, yeah. over in the back <laughs> yeah that that was the rip in the chat but it was good time. Oh, it was that was great still fun oh. and then I, uh what I guess what cars do you guys want to see this year? You know, any you looking at the new Hummer? What do you want to see? What are you excited about? What car? I won't lie to you. Right now, initially, I would love to review the new 911 uh, GT3. A manual would be really nice. Um, those cars, like you don't see those cars around. Oh, rest in peace. We'll about to run out of time. We got maybe what? Oh. Think of there's gonna be just so many electric cars this year. I mean, I think for the channel, I think a Porsche or a Plaid would be interesting. I'm not like super excited about Teslas, but to just to be in to drive it and see the experience. Um, the Vanderhall Brawley, I'm kind of interested in. Ooh. Yeah. That'll be a cool one, I think, personally. I think that will be, if they get it out this year, it will be kind of an interesting side-by-side -side slash commuter vehicle. That would be fun. Yeah, uh, I think I think when we do the Banner Hall one, that will be one I'm definitely looking forward to just because it's so different. It's yep. here in Utah. Like, there's a lot of components within that where I'm like, okay, this would be fun. Um I don't know if we'll be able to do the Hummer because the Hummer is just going to be very much a press car, very limited. But right, right. A cool one, I think for sure. Um, yeah. If we could get our hands on it, I would the C A Z O six. Hands down, definitely. That would be my top card if we could get our hands on it this year to review. Well, let's make it happen.
I agree. And, and that's with that new uh, that new uh, engine as well. Yeah, the LT five, I think it is. It's the flat plank. Mm -hmm. Sounds just like a Ferrari. It sounds yeah. the same for a Corvette because I it, and that's one thing that I think would be a lot of fun because it's I think it's the first time that Corvette has kind of gone outside of their. Well, they base tested off Ferraris. They they tout it as it's going to be a mixture of Porsche, Ferrari, and Lamborghinis. Which the U.S. is doing stuff like that. We'll see. Well, let's we'll see, and let's hope for the best. Okay. Huh? Okay. What's your favorite? What's the car you're looking for? Too? Oh yeah, uh, dude. I'll be honest. I want to. I want to do a V12 Lamborghini. I want an SVJ. The new Lamborghini, if that ever comes out. Yeah, one of those two. That'd be perfect. Got you. So how do you guys view uh, the whole Utah car scene? Oh, it's, yeah. it's been crazy. I think the last five years has really blown up. Um, between, I think, the YouTubers and then I don't want to toot our own, to own horn, but the Cars and Coffee has really brought a consistent car meet for people to bring their vehicles out. Utah's always had a really good car culture, but they've all been in storage. They've all, they get driven once in a while, but there was never really something being brought out all the time. And then you get a lot of these young guys that are rich and bringing a lot of tech in here that you kind of have groups of people in Utah that are kind of, it's a good competition. They are always getting the newest and best car, supercar. And so they're kind of competing with each other. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say along those lines, it's, it's been kind of crazy. I mean, there's been a few people that I knew um, just through th smaller connections and cause I've been kind of involved in the scene for a while out here. Um, I mean, as early as I could get a flight driver's permit, and so there was a lot of really cool cars out here, but not a lot of it was known. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, because there, there's a lot of money here in Utah, but a lot of people like to hide it. Um, and, you know, with all the, obviously all the new tech companies come out here, it's been really cool to see, you know, how it's that, how that has evolved the community, because now people are comfortable kind of driving them and people are bringing them out more. And it's kind of crazy. I mean, you get to see even young people now, you know, like me, Jeeves, Todd. Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say young for a <laughs> No, but, you know, in reality, like, when you see those cars, you would see the, you know, the retired 50, 60, 70, 80-year-old getting out of it, and you're like, oh, that makes sense, right? But, you know, to see young people actually getting involved who are working their butts off and, you know, being able to afford this to one extent or another, it's been really cool, and, I mean – you know, this, the scene here has blown up, it, you know, in both good and bad ways, but it's been awesome to see. Brandon, bad ways, what do you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, I, um, it is, it is interesting. I remember like having like the Audi when I had my A4 and I go to car meets and it was kind of weird. It was like, no one wanted to talk and that's all I want to do is just kind of introduce myself and network. Cause I had just moved here. Um, and then nothing happened. So I was like, okay, this kind of sucks. They used to have these in and out meets out in Orem. And then I got the GTR and that was a lot different and that was really cool. Um, but to like see the shift, like from when I had the GTR to now having the R8 and, uh, to see how even like tuners have changed and, it's kind of a different vibe. Like the vibe used to be like, I felt like, and I'm not trying to knock anything, but I felt like it used to be like really like back then it used to be like super inviting where everyone's like, Oh my gosh, like look at all these people. Cause back in the day you had like four or five different clubs that started at the same time. You had like salt city crew. You had, I'm trying to think of the other clubs that all started. Uh, <laughs> there was, it wasn't just salt city crew. There's other ones, but sure. Uh, nice plug. No, no, no. Sorry. I mean, yeah, but there's other crews that there's a bunch of other crews that started up, and I feel like you don't really see that very often. Like you don't have the, it's not the same where it was like, oh my gosh, you have this car, like come join this. Like I don't see anyone post about that stuff anymore, and so it's it's more of just like, oh, do, do you know this person or do you, like I don't know. It just it just feels a little bit different. It's growing, 
but it just, it just feels a little bit off. I, I don't know. I don't feel like it's as inviting as it used to be, but it's, I feel like it's huge. And I don't think there's another state that has more supercars per population, like in this close of a vicinity in this, in the United States. California. I, for sure. It's huge. California is huge. Man, I'm talking about like, not small. Oh, like, like, so, like concentrated per- area, you know, like per whatever you want to say, but like there's a lot of supercars here for there's size. probably 10 supercars per every million. I don't know. It's it's crazy. Yeah, there's there's crazy. Frick, there's probably that, like that's, that, that's, freaking area. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's just my initial thoughts. Okay. Well, I kind of back to Brady's point. I, Utah's always had money, but it's just kind of been the culture that they didn't right. want to show it off. And as he pointed, I mean, there's people bringing them out, so more people are more comfortable. So, because there's been some crazy cars that have been in Utah, it's just, just now people are more comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. Which is cool because it's like before, as a kid, if you wanted to see a car like that or of that tier, you had to go to you either had to know the right person mm-hmm. to get invited because like there's been cars there's been meets but they were always very like quiet hush hush like for right. Utah, ferrari club i mean ferrari club when they started years ago it was like you owned a ferrari and you didn't know what was happening unless you were in that you know scene and so it's cool because i feel like as this younger generation you know attends these types of events you're seeing more and more of it which kind of also sets kind of that expectation or, you know, kids can be like, oh my gosh, this is like real. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember seeing the, the first time I ever saw a Lamborghini was a Gallardo and it was random. And I didn't see one for at least two or three years after that. And I was like, holy crap, Utah has one of those, <laughs> you know? And now it's like a Lamborghini Gallardo. You're like, cool. Like, I right, park, <laughs> park with these guys, you know? And it's just cool how that, that side of the world, has evolved, but it's also evolved in a lot of other ways, you know, with builds and so, dude, it's nuts. It's cool. Yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. So, uh, any good stories uh, of doing things with what they call the Utah crew that you guys want to share? Hmm. So let's define let's define the Utah crew. I feel like I have an idea, but I'm just. Well, who do you see as the crew, or as the crew? Yeah, you know, who, it's who been you... it's always growing and. Um... In my opinion, it's growing a lot. Yeah, it's growing. Blossoming. Uh, on the photo, are you talking about the photo, like the ones we all took at? Uh, probably, uh, whatever, is that what you're talking about? I would assume that's probably. It. I assume that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We start. Yeah. I have. I'm thinking, and can we get a copy of that photo? <laughs> uh, I don't even have the photo of it, but I, I have it on my phone. It? Yeah, I have the it. The one and Sema the six by six. That yeah, that one is good too. That would that be good too. Have, have a better one. That one, that one definitely expands outside of Utah a little bit. It, does, it dips into Canada a little bit. Tyler and the squad. Oh uh, yeah, and then yeah. Arizona. Arizona. And Arizona. Yep. Yep. Uh, Lambo hey, Jesus. What, what's the question? What we're what we're all up to? Like or? what was some of the cool memories? Like cool. Some really good cool memories that you guys have of doing yeah. things with them. Shoot. Uh, I think one. Oh, go ahead, Brain. Go for it, Todd. Yeah. I was just thinking one that's off the top of my head is when we took uh, was it Faith's cousin to prom? Yeah, oh, that was sick. That was fun. That was up there. That one was pretty fun. We cruised up to the high school and got out right when all the kids were showing up to the school. Yep, and we had like this big supercar lineup, and we're all like revving, and it was like <laughs> everyone's getting hyped. It was so it didn't matter what car you had. It was cool. It was a fun time. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to say, I feel like we've had a lot of, like, really just kind of fun moments. Um, With the Utah crew, I feel like one of them was definitely, like, when we went out to the track uh, out in Eagle Mountain. That was kind of cool. It wasn't everybody there, but um, that was a fun one, at least as far as here in Utah. Mm -hmm. Um, Ah, man, there's, there's, like, a lot of things we've done. Unofficial, unofficial thing that probably no one knows about. Todd, James, and Nate both said that Braden and I could not kick a 50-yard uh, football. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think we were all gathered here, actually, at Braden's house. We all had, like, a dinner. Mm-hmm. And it just came up, and and uh, we were joking around about kicking a football, and James was like, it's like, you cannot kick a football 50 yards. And then Todd was, of course, you know, he's like, yeah, absolutely not. You can't do that. And then Nate just joined in. 
And so it was me, Braden, and Clayton who had to prove him wrong. And we did go out and kick the football 50 yards. Allegedly. So, those three were the only ones. There. I will send you a video, Kevin. Don't worry. It's coming. Okay, yeah. excellent. Who, which one of you three actually did the kicking that got they go 50 yards? Well, me and Jason are the ones that went out kicking. Clayton wasn't there. Yeah, Clayton was working, but we went out and kicked for our country. Yeah, yeah okay. so the two people that said they could do it are the ones that went out and did it. No other proof. Uh, Nate was there, and <laughs> Nate's the one that filmed it, Todd. <laughs> okay, Nate, awesome. Nate yeah, we have proof. That's cool. So, yeah, that's like a small one that was like really fun. That, yeah, I don't know what we'll do next, but yeah, it was a fun one. It was a small challenge. And we actually, here's even more proof. I'll be right back. Uh oh. He's br- busting out the football, I guess. <laughs> or the, the BYU jersey because he made the team. team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we actually were going to give it to James, but it's a sign. We all signed it. It's a signed football that for everyone that kicked the ball. And Todd actually had to sign it because he acknowledged that he lost. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh my gosh. Oh man. That, that, that's great. That sounds like a lot. It would have been a, a ton of fun to do. It was freezing. Holy balls. It was cold. That Did was any fun. of you guys uh, play sports in high school just out of curiosity? I, I played golf and volleyball. But I played all sports, but those are the two I actually played for school. Gotcha. Braden, uh, I'm seeing Braden go, no, no, and no. <laughs> I can tell by that look. <laughs> I mean, in high school, I really didn't play directly for the schools, a lot of club stuff. So, I mean, it's still like a, you still played sports yeah. like during that time. Yeah, we played sports. I mean, we would go do futsal, so we do soccer. Mm-hmm. And I didn't play even for the club team, but we did that. Rugby was fun. Ball Bra- was the same time. Braden's being humble. He was the champion underwater basket weaver. <laughs> <laughs> two time. Two time. Oh, two time so. champion. <laughs> He's the two time. <laughs> We're two time. 93 94 champion. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, weirdly enough, if. Anyone wants to take a look at me and to guess what sport I played? I don't even know if Todd knows this. I know Braden knows this, but I actually played tennis in high school. I was gonna. I knew tennis. Know that? Okay, fine. Okay, geez, I'm sorry. I underestimated Todd. <laughs> um, yeah, I played tennis in high school. I made the golf. T- I did make it barely. Uh, me and my buddy made a bet to see if we could make the golf team, and I made it. He didn't. No so I didn't even show up to golf, but um, I wasn't very good. But I made like just JV and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I played basketball and soccer. Those are probably uh, I played those a lot. And uh, fun fact: uh, Todd and I are actually going to be playing basketball next week. We have a one-on-one, so I'll keep you oh. updated on who wins that game. That should yeah. be Instagram Live, guys. I'm just saying. Hey, I guess yeah, we could go Instagram Live there. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Braden, you run the camera. <laughs> oh, wow. oh my god, I can do that. <laughs> That was pretty good. Uh, Should be fun. Should be fun. So if you guys could be anyone else on that does Automotive Utah, or uh, YouTube rather, who would it be if you could be someone else uh, that does Automotive Utah? Uh, I already know Jeeves' answer, so I'm going to answer for Jeeves. Why? Who is it? You know. Come on. Like, this is not even a question. He what? is not the mirror. What's it? Oh, no. Hold oh, no. on. Oh, no. Yes. No. What is Doug Mir? Daddy Doug. He loves the word this. Oh my so, god. So you know, I feel like Doug Demiro is yours. Okay. I, I I can't speak for him. I'm just going off of you know my gut. Oh, this is great. I cannot believe what I've just heard. <laughs> if I was going to be anybody in the automotive culture, yeah, Jeremy yeah. Clarkson, two thousand percent. Jeremy Clarkson, okay. He's my favorite. What? No, a want to be. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I want to be. Like, oh, no, I, I, I thought we were like emulating. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. want to be. Yeah, Jeremy Clarkson. He's my favorite. Doug Demero is good, just not my style. Not my, not my style. But not Hammond. No, see, I love Hammond. I love, I love them all. To be honest, 
but I feel like I just flow well with Jeremy Clarkson. I don't know why. Probably because he doesn't have the same knowledge that the other two have. Because I'm, for me, I'm not, I'm the dumb one. Like when it comes to like technical things, you have this nerd and then you have the other nerd over there and they know, they know everything. And so I come in there, I'm like, sick. Like, I don't know, like they're really smart. And so Jeremy Clarkson is the same way. He doesn't know like technical things. He doesn't know very many things. He's just, he's just funny. Like he's just funny. That's what saves him. And so, yeah. Jeremy Clarkson, that's my that's my that's my bet right there. Jeremy Clarkson, Braden or Todd, you can you're free to go next. Yeah, I mean, I I I think the style and stuff. I'm I'm with you on the top tier guys. I think those they saw, set the top tier, just as far as knowledge and content and just being funny. Yeah, I think they definitely set the, the set the bar. For sure. There's some other good ones out there. Throttle Houses, I like their style, I like their stuff, how they do their videos. A lot of the others is the kind of their own unique stuff, and that's that's who they are. And I don't, I I can appreciate, but I think we want to be our own our own thing. Got you, uh, yeah. Braden. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, I obviously like the first ones that I feel like really set the standard. But obviously, the top gear guys, Grand Tour, you know, Jeremy Clarkson. Him and you know all James those May. yeah James May and all those guys and um so you know I think a lot of what other channels and you know I feel like to an extent like you know our f- inspiration you know comes off from watching those guys over mm-hmm. the years because they yeah. they just did it best they were really good at what they did they did it they made it entertaining they were hilarious together and it's cool because it's like it's one of the few casts outside of filming where they're genuinely friends yeah exactly like they can go out they do whatever together and that's kind of where i feel like we are really strong in that area but um in automotive youtube not to be cliche and obviously go with those guys um i don't know if i'm being like frank i don't know if there's one person i would love to be in the automotive youtube world um i've actually never seen Braden watch a video consistently from like a single youtuber See, and I used to back yeah. in the day, like a couple yeah. of two, three years ago, I used to watch like DVE all the time because I actually like their content then was pretty entertaining and good. Um, ironically, and I've told James this, so I don't even feel bad for saying that, but I didn't ever watch his YouTube. In fact, I didn't <laughs> even know who he was a couple of times after meeting him, um, you know, being the strat man. And then, you know, I kind of learned who he was. And I was like, oh, but he's, he's really good on YouTube. I mean, he mm-hmm. gets to do a lot of cool things. So I, I guess... If I had to choose anybody who I know or mm-hmm. watched, I'd probably be him just mainly because of the experiences and the connections he has had, mm-hmm. you know, being able to go to Dubai and, you know, be there on delivery day for, you know, a, a Centenario or the Bugatti Devo, you know, uh, that would probably be the one just because of those experiences and just of, because of who he is on as a person. Yeah, yeah we touched, us on, uh, touched on this earlier. But what are your plans for Dirty Pipes this year? I, as far as reviews and things. Uh, uh, get, get, <laughs> one video, get one video done. Yeah. One video done. Yay. That's our biggest goal of the year, just to film. Yep. Yep. Just to be consistent, I think. I think, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to speak for both of them, but uh, for both the others. But um, I think that just to get together and to be consistent on filming, I think I think we could crush. I think we'll crush if we just could be consistent. We'll figure out all the little nuances and, and things that we want to make adjustments to. But as long as we're filming, we'll crush it. We all know this. It's just getting together and filming uh, takes some time. Yeah, yes. oh, I agree. Okay, so uh, I'll just kind of wrap this up here. Uh, so what do you guys do besides cars and YouTube and businesses uh, out, outside that kind of stuff? Uh, anything going on in your lives that you'd like to share? And just kind of, we play golf once in a while. It's true. Todd's an a uh, predator. Todd is an apex sense. predator. Yeah, Todd is an apex predator. Sorry, I guess I should specify because not everybody plays apex. Yeah. But we know no, it's Apex, though. That's quite the achievement, though, Todd. Yeah. I'm not a predator. They're lying. You don't play with Post Malone on the weekends? 
I wish. That would be cool. <laughs> no, but it is why you can't live near a school, so. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. Uh, oh. Todd is crap. He's so is. good. He's weird how good he is. Not if you play with him, he'll turn off his internet. That's true. Yeah, he doesn't play with <laughs> <man. laughs> Yeah, I'll rage quit on Brayden. <laughs> I'm horrible. That's why I don't play video games. <laughs> Which is kind of the opposite reason why you shouldn't. But like, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Todd's amazing. Yeah, he's good. Don't lie. Jeeves is the best gamer here. <laughs> ah, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah, we like games. I just play more than one game. I don't play just one specific game. We're going like Overwatch, Modern Warfare, like Halo Infinite. Um, we like rotate. We'll throw in Battlefield 2042 every now and then, even though it sucks. Yeah, we'll, we'll mix it up. We'll mix it up. But yeah, Todd exclusively plays Apex, and I've tried to get him to switch games, and he just will not do it. It's true. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah, but yeah, what's what's Braden's game? I like I like uh, first person shooters, so yeah. like Battlefield, Call of Duty, and I'm not great, but I I, I can hold my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he can do it. He just needs to play. Yeah, that's the base. He just needs to play. Ace Combat Five. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Hey. No, mm -hmm. honestly, it's for us. It's like you know, sometimes video games, but a, a lot of times when we're together, mm -hmm. if we're doing something, if it's not eating, we're golfing. Mm -hmm. Like we love golf. So yeah. Oh. Oh. Cruising cars, golf, eating food, and hanging out. Mm -hmm. And it's always that top golf, isn't it? Or pretty no. much. We no, actual, actual golf. golf. I think we've gone like two or three times together, and it's all been birthdays. Yeah, that's it. We never go. Gotcha. Yeah, we never go. You'll find us at a bowling alley before you find us at top golf. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> bowling. There, there we go. Yeah. Although we do love top golf. Yeah, top golf is sick, but we should never go. All right, so here's a chance for you to uh, do any plugs for your businesses and shout outs. So start naming them. Ooh, Brayden, name them. Shout out to Sister Dusara. <laughs> She always takes care of us when we come to St. George. Uh, it's true. Yeah, it's, true. it's, it's true. true. It's a legit yeah, shout My out. mom does take care of us. Yeah, <laughs> she's awesome. No, but in reality, um, uh, as far as plugs go, the only things I can really plug in is South Valley Photo. Mm -hmm. I do automotive photography. And then uh, I started a project this year called Meta Garage. It's the NFT space, which combines photography and the physical world into the digital world. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you don't mind following those and staying up to date, it'd be awesome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, for myself, I got to give a plug to Static, Static Marketing. Um, yeah, if you own a dealership and I already know for a fact your photos, your listing photos are probably terrible, we can help you with that. Don't even answer that question. I already know they're bad. Um, that's why we exist. But yeah, we do social media management, content creation. Um, yeah, we are like the, we crush it in the automotive community. We've been literally crushing it and we have amazing clients right now. We've just been growing, you know, every day. It's been amazing, but uh, static marketing. And then we got Zap Branding, custom hats, water resistant, um actually we need to get you set up on some hats too but yeah new hats and they're yeah. it's it's sweet yeah hey we need to get you guys some hats too sunday uh, sunday drive we need to get you guys yeah. Some. yeah we'll get you we'll get you hooked up on some but yeah zap right brand on, right on. static marketing those are the two gotcha i'd like to push dr pepper i'm good with that <laughs> i'm very good with that one todd <laughs> They're great, but oh, the drinks are delicious. Xbox gamers yeah, game. Wake Snow. Wake Snow 9. Yeah. <laughs> Hit yeah, him you up. can go follow my stream that I don't stream of video games. You should stream. On which platform? None. No, Come works. on, guys. Tell He's the truth on But, yeah, I want to definitely thank you for you guys for your time yeah, uh, thank you. today. Uh, oh. Look forward to seeing you. Uh, for, me, for myself, it will be uh, Maze Cars and Coffee. Yeah, down at uh, Young Living. Yep. For sure. Uh, much love to you guys.